So I'm going to end just, just with this. I'm going to show you a picture because I found this picture and it, I found it very poignant and I'm sure you will too. You probably remember no. the picture. This is a picture on a boat and this is 1962. And there are two people in that picture. This is the TSS Fair Sky. It was a Sitmar Line boat. Tell me who's in that picture. Well, it's my mum sitting there on the... Uh, Mary Ann. As I sit, Mary Ann on the, the far right. She's next to her brother, mm. uh, George. Uh, and uh, standing up in, in white is uh, a, a, a dashing fellow who happens to uh, be my father, uh, Carlo. Uh, who was uh, a purser on the ship uh, that my mother travelled to mm. on that long journey. To about, England? To, to England, here, where she lived in London for a while. And she fell pregnant? Uh, she did. She had a relationship uh, with Carlo and uh, during, I think, not just on the ship, but clearly from piecing it together... So you were conceived when, in England? ...when he... Quite likely, that's right. So you're actually, you're in, one of us. In, when he visited... You're English. Probably. I'm still not going for you in the ashes, so don't try that. <laughs> don't try that on. But you accept you could have that's, been conceived in this country. That's not going to happen. I think, I think chances are I was. Yeah. I think I was here uh, when the ship used to berth at Southampton. Mm. And uh, my mum uh, travelled, met him, had uh, a relationship uh, with him, uh, fell pregnant... Mm. Uh, he was, uh, in, she, when she told him uh, he was engaged to uh, someone, he's, uh, back in Italy. the person who became uh, he, his wife back in Italy. And uh, so she went back to Australia, uh, had me, uh, made the courageous decision in 1963 to uh, be a, a single mother and to, to raise me. She was uh, very Catholic. Uh, so it was a, a difficult thing for the family. And at that time... She was urged to, to have you adopted. She, she was, and that was what was very common uh, at the Your time. Your life could have been so different. It would have been very different. And at, at the time it was to be that I had been... I would be adopted out and that uh, the story would be told in the uh, local community and in, in the family that... Uh, she had uh, got news of my father's death and that had caused her to the trauma to, to lose her child. Uh, but she couldn't do that. I was, there was a moment where a nun at the hospital knew that she was the sort of person who didn't... She just really didn't want that to happen. She was under a bit of pressure. So she brought me into my mum and my mum was never going to let me go. What a moment. It, it, I mean, that's sliding doors. Oh, absolutely. Of an incomparable, enormous consequence. Oh, and she then adopted his name, Albanese. But and, continued to, and, to pretend that he had yeah, died in an accident. That's right. And I was told Including that. Including to you. Yeah, I was told that until I was old enough when she felt I could understand. You uh, were 14, I think. I was 14, 15. Uh, you know, how, and, did you, how did you feel when you found out he's potentially still alive? Oh, I at the time. I mean, I was a pretty tough young kid. We had a we had a difficult upbringing. I mean, my mum had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and was crippled up. Was an invalid pensioner. We lived in a council house uh, where she had lived her, her whole life. My grandparents had died by then, uh, so it was just me and mum. We didn't have anything economically, but I had her unconditional love, and that was enough for me. Mm. And so I said, I'm not interested, uh, you know, that you're enough for me, which is what she needed to hear. So while she was alive, I didn't search for him, but she died in 2002. Mm. My son had come along uh, in 2000. And there was a moment where I was uh, at the, her gravesite and my little boy was very little said, you know, where's your daddy? And I sort of realised that, you know, I needed to... And he had a right to yeah. ex hear, understand uh, what had happened. And so I, I had, I guess, once she passed away, I could then search for him without uh, 
bringing any uh, sense that she wasn't all I needed. Mm. And so I found him uh, in 2009. Well, it's an amazing story because this is nearly 40 years later. Yeah, 46 years later. I mean, incredible. I was 46 when, uh, when pure, we met. Right, and by pure chance, a friend of yours is now running the ship company that had been renamed several times. It was now the right. Carnival Cruises. You knew this woman and she helped the search and they find your dad's old employment, employment card details in some dusty, rickety area in Genoa where the original ship stuff had all been sent. Yeah. And from that you were able... By now, you're a, you're a minister, right, under... That's um, right. I was a minister in the Kevin government. Run. And you were able to track down your dad. And you're in a meet, or you're, you're in your office, I think, and it's a Thursday, and you get a call from this friend of yours who's running the, the ship company, and she just says, we found him. It was, it was a remarkable moment, and uh, I was chairing a, a ministerial council meeting of all the state and territory ministers, so an important meeting that night. And uh, I told my staff to go on without me, and I just took, I took my breath away. It was uh, an extraordinary moment. Emotional for and, you? Oh, it was incredibly emotional. Did you shed a tear? Was and it? then, oh, absolutely. It was, it was uh, I didn't realise just how significant it was uh, because I think you, it, it is, everyone, everyone's different. And relationships are complex, as my life story shows. Uh, but uh, for me, that sense of identity and belonging uh, was important. You know, I, I had this name, Albanese, and I had said, uh, where's your, when asked, and I represent a big Italian constituency as well in Sydney. So when I was asked, I would say Naples because that's where the ship sailed mm. from. Uh, but in the end, it was uh, Puglia, the other side of uh, of. Italy. And six weeks there. later, you, you're there. Yeah. And, I and met... the door opens and in walks your dad. This is 46 years later. Yeah. I, we, had a, we wrote to him uh, and uh, wrote a careful letter just saying that my, my mother, Mary Ellery, was uh, known to him and that I would be visiting Italy. I was visiting the European Transport Minister at the time, uh, Tajani was based in, was an Italian. So I had a meeting with him scheduled. Uh, so I, I wrote and said, I'll be here you know, on this day, on, on this weekend. And so uh, I met with, they had a, an intermediary, they were wondering what was going on here, I guess. Had an intermediary, I told her the story and she, I said, I don't want anything else, anything out of him. Uh, I would like to meet him. I think he's my father. And so I didn't know what to expect. And then the, the very next morning I had a very short window of opportunity because I had a full schedule. I was on my way to London as well to speak at the International Maritime Organisation here, the big conference. And uh, in he walked. I didn't know what to expect and he just embraced me. And what a moment. That was quite extraordinary. How and did you feel hugging your dad that you thought was dead oh, was, until you were 14? It was an incredible moment and, and not just him but uh, my half-brother and half-sister uh, came with him. And so I, I went from having a, a, a very small family to having a much larger one and it just gave me that sense of completeness. And, and I, was, I was very lucky because he passed away in January of 2014. So we were able to meet on a few occasions. I, I travelled to Italy. I brought back, it was a short meeting, so I brought back my son to meet his grandfather in, in the following Easter. So in Easter of, of 2010. And we spent, would any of this have happened of if time. your boy hadn't said what he'd said at your mum's gravesite? Quite possibly not. Or if uh, I, someone at Carnival Cruises happened to be someone you hadn't knew. have done a lot, of, and if she hadn't have known a historian mm -hmm. who lives in Wollongong, who 
who knew where to look and had found this box of papers, essentially employment files in uh, a port it's in It's an incredible... Genoa. Were you able to be there when your father died or not? I went to... Uh, I went to visit him in 2013 in December. Uh, we lost the election in 2013, but then I'd become Deputy Prime Minister uh, before we, we lost that, that election, lost government. Uh, he wasn't well, um, so I, I went to see him. Uh, I knew that he was, he was dying. Uh, he was at home in his family flat. Uh, there in Puglia and uh, we knew we were saying goodbye uh, to each other and that the last thing that he said to me was that he was glad that uh, he'd found me. Amazing. It was uh, quite, quite a journey from uh, that beginning to be Australian Prime Minister. It says a great deal about our country. It's a hell of a I story. Think. What would they have made of you becoming Prime Minister, your parents? Um, well, my my mum would have uh, uh, shed a tear perhaps each and every day. I remember my first speech, she, she was there up in the uh, the gallery and I couldn't look up because if I had of, I would have been hopeless as well. Uh, she was incredibly proud and I see uh, what I do as uh, you know, her achievement without her and that unconditional love mm. of a parent for their, their child, um, which, which she gave me, you know, she did it really tough. She, had, she really wasn't very well when she died. She was only 65 years old and she was spent uh, really at the, at the end of what Wouldn't had been a tough life. She made your journey today, you'll go and see the king. Oh, she would have. And you know, she would have been having, having skipped the journey to the hospital, diverted with you That's inside right. her uh, to see the Queen. I mean, what an amazing journey that has been. Oh, look, she would she would have been uh, wrapped by all of it, mm. and uh, she would have been very proud. And I, uh, I, I still think that you know she's she's looking down on me, and uh, she's still with me uh, each and every day because the values that I have. Uh, the values uh, that uh, she gave me. And uh, I say I was raised with three great faiths, to go back to Russell Crowe being one of them, uh, the Catholic Church, uh, South Sydney Football Club and the Australian Labor Party. And uh, they're the values uh, that I have uh, and that, that I hold very dear. Prime Minister, it's been a real pleasure. What an extraordinary story. Uh, your story is, and thank you for sharing it with me. Yeah, thanks very and, much. And good luck with my king when you go and see him. I indeed. I'll, I'll say good day to him. Please do. <laughs> Great to see you. Good on you. Thank you.